Well, good morning, Interbet fans, and welcome to the preview for the Vol Classic. Please remember to subscribe and share the show. Um, it helps uh, keep our numbers up. And um, if you like it, uh, send me a message. Always well appreciated. But let's kick off with today's meeting. We're at the Vol Classic Tuesday, the 29th of November. And uh, the first race is off at 12.35. Pentrometer 23, three meter false rail at 800. Now, <clears throat> getting into it, I'm going to start with Johann Janssen von Furen. Magnificent job training the winner of the um, Betway Summer Cup. And uh, he also trained the fourth horse, who uh, looked like he had had enough that horse, but he ran a cracking good race, so that was fantastic. But more importantly, great big shout-out to Lawrence Werners and his family for um, the winning this race. He's a really passionate man. He's been very helpful with me, and um, I, I think he's just fantastic for racing. And um, he comes from a long line of racing backgrounds. But the kudos has got to go to Justin for Mark, his uh, bloodstock agent. And um, I feel proud to have been involved in this journey in a small way because I did tell Justin, who I've known since his agent days of, um, of uh, Anthony Del Pesh, that uh, he should get hold of um, my great friend in Argentina, Ignacio Pavlovsky, who is the uh, chief director of Palermo Race Club. He's a young man that comes from uh, a racing family. Uh, his father was the best vet in Argentina, and Ignacio uh, bred this horse at Harris Campanag, which is uh, one of the best farms in Argentina. And uh, Ignacio was instrumental in putting Patrick Shaw on the map in um, Singapore, and that was largely due to my influence as well. So I've been involved in this journey all the way along, and um, the common thread is Ignacio Paloski. And I'm so glad that um, he bred a Group 1 winner in South Africa and uh, that uh, Justin for Mark bought the horse uh, for the Werner team. So, great start. And let's hope that uh, Johan Janssen van Furen carries on with uh, uh, winners with the first race, which is off at 12.35. Fly Isabella Fly. I find it very hard to go against her. She does look like a business. She's got the plum draw of one. And um, who can beat her? Well, Simply Magic's drawn 13, um, uh, working well, may need run. Well, that's, um, uh, if, if ever I've seen a contradiction in terms, that's a contradiction. And the Crawford, two Crawford horses both get the same comment. Working well, if they're working well, are they fit? That's all we need to know. Uh, but he says may need the run. So anyway... Uh, may need the run, but drawn 13, I think, will beat him more than the run. Memorial Day, I think, is a big danger. And Kabu, Kabuki Mo would be an improver with uh, Lucky Hood Larkers for the Mozienis um, rider. That's number 10. Race 2, uh, Mera rated 77, fillies a mere 1,000 meters, and I'm going with the uh, same team again. Mythical Dream, uh, this beautifully bred daughter of Karari, Gets Gavin Larina again. He's ridden her twice out of her three starts. Her times are good. I think she's very well merit rated, this filly. She's a three-year-old with an 87, three out of three. And uh, as I'll point out to you later on, they're one-time winners that have got higher merit ratings than her, and they're not nearly as good as her. So she should go in again. She's drawn two. Lots to like about her. Showtime number two's got a chance. Dancing Dora's won three in a row as well and been a revelation since she left St. John Gray and has come to Farley Broncos. He's done a marvellous job with her. Race three. Merit rated handicap fillies and mares, and they go 1,600 metres. And uh, the Crawford runner, one unconditional love, has got everything in its favour. But working well may need the run, as I said, is a contradiction in terms. Uh, Moraine. Looks like the right horse and is 7 to 10, drawn 2 for the Van Furen stable. And Keegan DeMello rides this one. The one point penalty for winning last time. It beat Princess Ozma and she's one point better off. And I think that there's big value in Princess Ozma at 3 to 1. Um, that's number 4 on the card. She's third run after her is She's head of the speed rating. She's got a lot to like about her. And she might just upset Moraine, but they're both um, very nice improving three-year-olds. And if you see what I mean, 
Uh, Moraine's got a higher merit rating than um, Mythical Dream, as has Princess Ozma. They're one and two time winners. Sierra Leone Dancer, the other Broncos runner, definitely got a chance. Race four, Maiden Plate, they go 1,800 meters. Um, I had a close look at this race, and with the scratching of London Palladium, it looked like a three corner contest. Two main mission, I think, has got a huge chance. First run at the Vol is what it is, might be against it. Head of the speed rating should go really well. Gets uh, the competent Danielson aboard, and I expect it to run well. The favourites fall, Billy Spellbound. Uh, two very good runs. Third run after arrest, Calvin rides it for Sean Terry. And then Sparkling Jubilee got very good form, drawn one. Mozi Yeni uh, for Michael Cox. I'm just sticking with those three. If you're looking for others, Skyjet definitely comes into the race with a chance on one decent run. And Royal Raphael for St. John Gray. Race 5, mirror rate of 71, 2,000 metres. This is a tough race, but I like Ignatius, the uh, uh, Furen runner. I think this horse is dying to go 2,000 metres. He's shown some really nice form. We liked him when he won. The next run, he didn't run a bad race at all, and I expect him to go extremely well. Check him out. He's merit rated 86 um, as a one-time winner from four starts. Vengeance Forever. Got to have a chance, this horse. Um, Mike the Cox runner, Raymond Danielson. Chasing Mavericks. Here's another one, there's Crawford, that came off a rest. Not a word about him in the comments. So why wouldn't they comment on him and they commented on the other two? Maybe Paul Barrett wants to have a bet. You know, Paul is a big punter in Cape, Cape Town. That's actually a bit tongue-in-cheek. Big punter on the golf course, Paul, and he hates losing. Race six. Um, this is a merit rate of 90, and they go 1,600 metres. I'm going with number seven, Future Pearl. I think this horse is well in at the weights. Got 53 kilos. He's only got a merit rating of 76, and he gets a four-kilogram claim from draw one. Uh, Sia van der Sabiso uh, does not have to do much wrong for to, uh, to be able to get this horse in the right place in the, ra in the race. Drawn one, all he's got to do is jump, get him in a position, and he should be able to win this. Um, and uh, if you look at the weights of this race, kill shot has got to give him uh, 11 kilos. He's a, uh, she's a, she is a one-time winner um, from 10 starts. Future Pearl's a one-time winner from four starts. And you really cannot compare the two, but um, 11 kilos is a lot of weight. Atticus Finch is your hot favorite. Uh, this horse has got a merit rating of 88. He's had three starts, one win in two places. So he doesn't look particularly well-weighted when you start looking at some of the earlier ones. And he's got to give um, 10 kilos to Future Pearl. Very difficult when they've got this exactly the same profile. Um, I and mean, this is ridiculously this similar profile. World's Best got a, um, a high merit rating for winning. She won quite well. Uh, just Eminent is a front runner and ran a good race last time. And Lovers Lane, head of the speed rating. Race 7, merit rated 70, and they go 1,500 metres. I'm going strongly with um, number 5, Kalahari Blue. Looks absolutely the right horse, and the announcer for Furin should have a very good day today. This was extremely well merit rated as a two-time winner. Um, from five starts, he's got a merit rating of 82. So it all depends where the handicapper starts you off. Where he starts you off is where he ends up getting stuck with you. Turpitz is um, carrying 62 kilos. Third run after a rest, look for a good run from this one. The Crawford stable could have a good one or a horrible one. Um, and we'll just have to see how they go. Monmercy might be the big improver, number eight uh, for Billy Raiders. His stable's in cracking four. Race eight, um, this is a merit rated fillies and mares. They go 1450, and I find this extremely difficult. It looks like a two horse race one Queen of Smoke, two good wins, and um, the other one that looked like the right horse was five Gilda Gray. Very good form from the Bonnie Broncos. In great form he is. But Java House is the horse I'm putting into all the play. I think there's a big jockey up here getting Mozi Yeni. Um, but she's always slow away. And once you're always slow away, very difficult to make up the ground. If she don't gets out, she should run really well. So from me, James Goodman, and the whole Interbet team, uh, congratulations to the boys winning the Summer Cup and to Mike DeCock on running one, two, three in the Dingons.
two highlights from Saturday.